And for more, let's welcome in CBS Sports bracketologist Jerry Palm. Jerry, North Carolina entered the day as one of your last four in on Wednesday. They lose at home to a previous 10-win Marquette team. How much does this loss hurt the Tar Heels tournament resume? Well, it definitely hurts. It's one of their worst losses of the season, if not the worst loss that they've had this season. Uh, they they were fortunate, I guess, in a sense that it was a bad day for bubble teams all around. It was Seton Hall losing uh, to Butler, uh, with Indiana losing at Rutgers. However, at the end of the day, North Carolina still drops out of the bracket because of this loss to Marquette. All right, you mentioned a couple teams there along with UNC. Who else hurt their tournament resume the most on Wednesday night? Yeah, really, the, probably the next worst would have been Seton Hall, losing at Butler, one of the uh, teams near the bottom of the Big East standings. And this is their second consecutive loss on the road to a team near the bottom of the Big East standings. And, you know, home or road, you got to win games like this when you're trying to fight your way into the bracket, and Seton Hall hasn't been able to do that. No, they have not. On the flip side, who's a team that helped their resume the most on Wednesday? Really, there was only one team at all who helped their resume that's a bubble team, and that team is St. Bonaventure, who won at Davidson early uh, this evening. And St. Bonaventure then moved into a tie with VCU in first place in the Atlantic 10. That race has been really tight all season long. Probably going to come down to the conference tournament to see if one or both of those teams can get in. When you look at St. Bonaventure, it, let, let's say they, they, and I know we're, we're, we're obviously working here in, in, in what-if scenarios. Is St. Bonaventure, is that a team that's good enough to be an at-large team? They are, but they don't have a lot of margin for error. I mean, they're, they're pretty squarely on the bubble right now. They're, I didn't have them in the last four in, but they're just above that group of teams. So there's not a lot of margin for error for St. Bonaventure. That's why winning a road game against a team like Davidson, who's a pretty good team in that league, not a tournament quality team, but still pretty decent, uh, is a big win for St. Bonaventure. Yeah, taking care of business with back-to-back -back wins over Davidson. All right, as you know, we are less than three weeks away from Selection Sunday. As you continue your bubble watch, what's the game you'll be watching closely on Thursday? Yeah, we got a gift. Uh, Western Kentucky is going to play at Houston tomorrow in a game that was just scheduled a few days ago. That's a low-risk, high-reward game for Western Kentucky, who already has a win at Alabama on its resume. If they can get another big road win uh, this time at Houston, uh, Western Kentucky could really solidify a spot in, as an at-large team as we enter the last two weeks of this season. Now, they're playing in Conference USA, so there's a lot of potential for bad losses there. They've already got a couple of them. But a win at Alabama and a win at Houston would be huge uh, for Western Kentucky as they try to play their way into this field. CBS Sports Bracketologist Jerry Palm breaking down the bubble on a Wednesday night. Jerry, thank you. And here's a look at Jerry's last four in and first four out. Drake, Colorado, Minnesota, and Georgia Tech. His last four in, his first four out. North Carolina, Michigan State, Stanford, and Duke. Less than three weeks away from. Want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.